Hi. In this program, we're going to take a look at the trends in the periodic table. And the program has been divided into two parts. In the first trends, we're going to take a look at the atomic radius, ionization, electronegativity, and electron affinity. First, to understand these trends, we need to look at the forces that are at play inside of our atom. So let's begin with some of the factors that affect the pull from the nucleus. So I'll draw here a nucleus with a positive charge and those outermost valence electrons. We have the rule that opposites attract. Now, if I increase the number of protons that are in my nucleus so that I have more protons present, that creates a situation where I have a greater pull on the electron. So what you have to remember here is more protons, more pull. What about distance? Well, let's take a look. Here's our let's say our initial situation that we had above. If I take that electron now and I put it at a location that's further out, that causes a reduction in the force. Now, I get greater distances when I increase the number of energy levels. So when I take my electron, say, from a first energy level, n equals 1, out to a second energy level, where n equals 2, I've increased the distance and I've weakened that pull. Lastly, shielding, or inner level electrons. Let's go back to our first situation again. I have some attraction that exists between this positive and this negative. However, if there are some electrons at lower energy levels, they essentially push out on that electron, reducing the effective pull. So what I have is in these last two situations, where I have greater distance and more shielding from lower level electrons, I get less pull. However, when I increase the number of protons that are in the nucleus, I get more pull. So let's look across the periodic table as I move from lithium across to fluorine. Lithium has three protons in its nucleus. Fluorine, nine protons in its nucleus. So as a result, I can see as I'm moving across from left to right, I have more protons. And that then results in more pull. What about energy levels? Well, this has two energy levels. This has two energy levels. So I have the same number of energy levels. And as a result, that second factor really isn't at play. What about inner level electrons? Well, underneath the two, there are those two electrons. So underneath this second energy level, there's two shielding electrons. Underneath this energy level are two shielding electrons. So we have two shielding in both cases. So these two factors really aren't at play. The only factor at play is more protons, more pull. So as we move across, we can say there is always more pull from our nucleus. Let's look at what happens as we go down the periodic table. So we go from lithium down to the element sodium. Let's move it up here a bit to see a bit better. So sodium has 11 protons in its nucleus. So at first glance, we're going to get more pull because we have more protons. But we also have more energy levels. We're going out to the third energy level from the second. So we have more energy levels, more distance. And lastly, shielding electrons. We've already mentioned up here that there are two shielding electrons underneath the three We've got all of these electrons shielding. So altogether, that's 10 shielding electrons versus our two shielding electrons. So we also have more shielding. This factor and the bottom factor essentially cancel each other out. We have more pull, but we have more shielding. The two effects cancel, leaving us with more energy levels and a lessening of the pull. So as we move down the periodic table, we can make the claim 
that we always get less pull from our nucleus. Now we're in a position where we can look at some of the patterns in these properties. Let's look at the effect of our radius, the distance to the outermost electrons. As we get more pull, we would expect the following to happen. More pull should result in smaller atoms. And less pull should result in larger atoms. Electronegativity. Electronegativity is defined as an element's attraction for the electrons in a bond. If we have more pull, we have more attraction. So we would expect electronegativity to increase. So I'll write that as En increases. With less pull, we have less attraction, so we would expect our electronegativity decrease down the periodic table. Now we'll look at the last two trends. Ionization energy, the energy required to remove one mole of electrons from a substance in a gaseous state. If we were to write it out as a, an equation, it would look something like this. So we have to put energy in to rip off that electron. Well, if a substance has more pull, it's going to hold on to that electron tighter. So more pull is going to result in higher ionization energies. It's going to take more effort to rip that electron away. As we go down the periodic table with less pull, we expect a weaker attraction for that electron, and we're going to take less energy to remove it. Lastly, electron affinity. It's the energy released when a mole of gas gains an electron. It looks something like this. Now, the first thing I'd like to point out is sort of a difference between the two. This requires energy, this releases energy. So this requires and this releases, because it's on the other side of the equation. It's a product of the reaction. To note this difference, what the authors have done of your periodic table, your data booklet from IB. Let's move this out front. You'll notice here in this data, you have the ionization energy. So let's take a look at boron, for instance, 801. That's the ionization energy. That's the energy required. This one is negative 27. That's my electron affinity. It's negative to donate the fact that energy is being released. So we use positive values to indicate a requirement and negative values to indicate a release of energy. So let's cut that out of here. And now we'll go back to the trends. As we move across, more pull. So what that means in the case of our atom with our electron way out there that's coming in, it's going to be pulled in and it's going to fall further into the nucleus. More pull releases more energy. And that will mean that you're going to get a bigger negative value, a more negative value. Conversely, where we have less pull, we're going to release less energy And that release of less energy means your value is going to be less negative. So that's a quick look at four of our trends. In our next program, we'll take a look at the melting point and the ionic radius of our elements. Thanks for watching.